you doing? Good. Nice to see you again. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, welcome. This is Sunday. Sing along Sunday with Ricky D and Mike Dillon. Boy, it's been a long time since I got to see y'all the whole wide world, so I want to do the first record for you. So that's what we're going to do. Turn this guy on. And hope that the dog doesn't break through the doors and come and run in and yell at us. In fact, maybe we'll let Jazzy the dog come in when the show's over. She can come in and pray to her. Um, ready? Ready. I'm thinking of standing, but I'm already seated. So I bought this green suit to wear for you this Sunday morning. And, uh,
Chucky's in love. So I wrote that song, I'm thinking it was 1977. That was an incredible year in my life. I met Alfred Johnson, who would be my songwriter on, uh, my co-writer on Company, and, and Weasel, and Horn Parts on Youngblood, which still a matter of discussion. And, other great things that we've done together and hope to do in the future. And um, met Ivan Alls, who introduced me to Lowell George. And Lowell George, who in, in, indirectly introduced me to Warner Brothers Records, where I met Russ Teitelman and uh, Lenny Worker. I haven't talked to him in so many years. And, and we had that great year of recording the record, 1978, that ended on Christmas Eve. Um, so it was just a 12 weeks at most, Christmas Eve, where we did the orchestrations and almost ended up in double golden time or triple golden time, which is overtime on a holiday after hours. <laughs> yeah, you do. But uh, but I stopped just in time and uh, and didn't lose all my would be profits on orchestra, and and um, when we listened to the record when we got the first oh it's just so thrilling the first pressing which you could only play once or twice um, and then they began to lose their integrity and they rented a record player for me because I didn't have one and I rented a room at a hotel so I'd be all by myself and listen to the record for the first time, I heard a new sound. I heard something I hadn't heard before. It was so beautiful and, um, and so rooted in traditional music, but, but kind of new, you know. It was an exciting month, the month before the record came out. I didn't know how blessed I was because everybody working with me let me do exactly what I wanted at all times and never tried to interfere. It was a, a, as if it had always been and would always be and was meant to be. And that's what that felt like. So anyway, check his love. And um, the next song on the list, shall we Shall we go to the next one, or shall we do another guitar song? You want to save the piano songs for later? Yeah. Let's so you'll do, do what? You want to do what Weasel or Night, Night Train is the third track. Uh, let's do. Or Young Bloods is the track after Night Train. Let's do Young Blood, then we'll go to the twelfth string. Okay. okay. Um, can I stand, or would would it be okay? All right. Uh, I'm just singing to the air. Um, Take off my ring. Oh, look at all those scotch tape and stuff on the. Can I tell that off? <laughs> yeah! That's all right. The rest of it's okay. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. 
smiling under my mask, Ricky. Say what? I'm smiling at you under the mask, just so you know. So like, much fun to play with you. Yeah. I missed you. Yeah. I feel kind of whole now. Feels good. like to donate some money, if you would like to donate some money to this concert, which we would be so grateful for, I have a Venmo account, which is at Ricky Lee Jones, Venmo at Ricky Lee Jones, and PayPal is PayPal me at Ricky Lee Jones, yeah, PayPal me at Ricky Lee Jones. Links to donate are in the comments. So, uh, also, if you're looking there while you're doing your bubbles and your hearts, I hope you're all out there. And uh, if it's just, you know, 25 of us, it's 25 of us having the best morning in the whole wide world. I'm going to do, uh, don't you think? Well, what's sort what's of happening? being in bed with somebody you love, it's the best morning in the whole or you could be hallelujah down at the church. Sometimes I go to this local church called the Church of the Sea Star or something. And um, and uh, and they got a choir in there. It's a Catholic church, but in New Orleans style, it's got a kind of Baptist style choir singing Presbyterian version of the Lord's Prayer. So Everything's funky. <laughs> like, what do I care about? I don't think we did, though. Oh, let me just turn this down while I do this. All right. Sorry. I finally get to play my 12 string. I never take it on tour because uh, there's just one too many things to carry. Look, if something happens like my bra is showing or something, will one of you four and three gentlemen let me know? So that show by Ricky is really good. <laughs> <laughs> this song was inspired by true events in, in mine and other people's lives that I knew. One friend I had was named Pamela. Pamela, the African queen, and what a queen she was. I met her at the Comeback Inn, maybe in 76 or so. I think we were about the same age, and she said, do you want to share my table? And we sat and had burgundy wine together more than one night. And it was with, it was with Pamela that I first met Sal Bernardi. And we stepped outside the Comeback Inn, which was in Venice on Washington Boulevard. I think it's got a new name now. And, um, and we all started um, singing uh, the Jet song together. Uh, it, it, Pamela had an amazing repertoire. Her favorite band was Yes. And um, I was just thought that was funny that she liked Yes. But that's a story I want to talk about, about music crossing culture, about you never know who you're talking to. You make it, we can't, we all do, we make assumptions about people, but you never know. You could be talking to a young black man who loves Buffalo Springfield, and a young woman who loves Yes, and uh, doesn't, doesn't give a hoot about Al Green, you know? You say, who cares what music? But the music means that we've crossed invisible barriers. And um, that takes a lot of, well, it's not courage. That takes a lot of love of music to cross those barriers. And once you do that, the whole world opens up for you. So Pamela had a little girl that had been removed from her custody. Um, and uh, she was fighting to get her back, and she would get her back. 
later in the story. Many years later, I met her and her daughter in a, in a little secondhand store. Was, but it's also inspired by my mother, who's, who's her mother, my grandmother, lost all her children uh, taken away by the Richland County, I think, in Ohio. And, um, and then all Peggy had left was my mother, Betty. And the social worker came to take that baby away. My, my grandmother slipped out the back window and ran through the cornfield with Betty in her arms. I grew up with that story. It's part of who I am. I ran across the cornfield and I was in my mother as grandma carried her and my daughter was with us too. So the stories of your family are part of who you become. This song is called Night Train. Ready my throat. Mike Dillon 
and we're and both of us are making the train go choo 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 down the track, right? Um, oh, I gotta unplug it. Okay. Um, I used to not be able to do that song live. It was. Also on side one, right? Is Weasel on side one? Yeah. All right. This was written then about the other friend I met that night, Sal Bernardi. Um, I was so enchanted with him. He was a Italian, tall, dark guy. It wasn't like anything I was seeing there in uh, Venice, California. And he had West Side Story in him, which was so hard to find. I looked for it everywhere. And, and it became the bond between me and many friends I would make in my life. Um, so I had only been to the East Coast once when I was eight. I went to see my grandfather, who was a saxophone player and worked at the St. Regis with Paul Whiteman's band. We weren't allowed in the hotel. <laughs> uh, in fact, I think he got in trouble when, when we, we came by once. But, um, Hallway and grandfather. So I didn't know. I didn't have anything but my imagination when I when Sal left Venice and headed back to New Jersey. And so um, this is a great song, but it's got some funny uh, mistakes in it. But who cares? Because I, I didn't know a, a Mario from a, a Mario. So here we go.
Shame he's happy. <laughs> that was awesome. so good. Oh my gosh. Playing with humans again. Yeah. Can I tune up? Yeah. Do you have like a tuner or should I just take your vibe so um, I can hear him a little bit? We're just going to tune up. Yeah, I got an idea. Grab your green. I've got a tuner on my phone. Thank you, dear. Let's see. So Texaco now? Yeah. Let's do a little effect. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and thank Joe. You. Joe H U I Ho Hugh? Anyway, Joe, and Elise Kingsley, I'm so embarrassed that I got that wrong, and Jamie DeLapa, and, um, and Mike Dillon, and all the invisible folks that are in back of my telephone, thank you for coming. Just so you know, again, the links to donate are in the comments. It's PayPal, the PayPal thing is uh, just at Ricky Lee Jones, which Joe helped me get right. And the, oh no, the PayPal thing is PayPal me at Ricky Lee Jones. The Venmo is Venmo at Ricky Lee Jones. And there's still a donation page on Facebook if you don't have any of those and you just want to put some money in there. And just so you know, all of our shows were canceled. And um, Yeah, we're supposed to be in Europe right now. Yeah, it was going to be a great summer. And um, going back to Montreux and North Sea, right? Yeah. And, and we missed our spring date. So your contributions here, your patronage, are um, essential to um, paying rent, food, and the things that I have to do to make it through the year. And it's not like I'm putting a little extra aside. You're, you're paying for for our, as you would be if you bought a ticket. But so you're, you get to decide your ticket price. This is the last chance Texaco.
There's a smell for you. I got an LSD for you there for a while. <laughs> um, oh, well, we better get moving. So I was going to play a little longer because, you know, there were a couple of erroneous things that said that the show started at 1. So we're going to do our thing and then maybe take a short break and do some of the new stuff, three or four new things at the 1 o'clock hour. And um, that are a little fun for us and relevant to sorry, these times in which we live. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we still got easy money. Yeah, yeah. How about uh, Coles, Danny's? Colesville? Let's do Danny's. Okay. Then we'll do the piano stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this the last? Mm -hmm. Easy money and then Danny's are the last easy two money. guitars. All right. So we'll do uh, easy money first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then. And that is um, in D, right? Yep. about myself and as soon as I started making up characters to write about I was able to tell everything about my life and my stories as long as I didn't say me or if I said me I was being another me easy money and uh, 
this song came later that year. There was this place on the corner of Cahuenga and Hollywood Boulevard, a block or two from Fredericks of Hollywood, which was a, still a very erotic uh, place for me because if you remember in the back of magazines, they'd have the Rosicrucian ad next to the Fredericks of Hollywood ad, oh, yeah. which had the pointed bras, which, you know, even for a little girl, or I don't know, we're like, oh my God, that's dirty minutes. I'm just disappointed bras. And, <laughs> and then they got tied into the Rosicrucian things. Oh God, pointed bras. Brothers of the Rosy Cross. So now, yeah, I, which I, I do like that, you know, they got a place up in Montreux up in the top. Of, anyway, uh, what was I saying? The pointed bras. Oh, how I got to this song. So downstairs was um, this place called. Um, it wasn't Danny's All Star, but it was something like All Stars hamburgers, and um, the guy who ran it was a fierce little ex-convict who wielded his knife all the time at people who were bothering him. I'd go down and I never had money, you know. Maybe uh, I'd get a coke once in a while and and take it back up and try to write songs. So. When I got signed, they gave me, you know, a big advance, like maybe $50,000 or something. And uh, I didn't have any money. I had to borrow cash when I got that $50,000 check from Lenny and Russ, who handed over like $40 that they had on them, which to me, a lot of money. Went over to Kawang and Hollywood into Danny's All-Star Joint and ordered an English muffin and a cup of coffee. And he put it in front of me, and I said, how much is that? And he said, it's on the house. And thus I learned that if you have money, you don't have to pay for anything. And if you don't have money, you never have enough money to buy even an English muffin. And that's the moral of Danny's All-Star Joint, right? <laughs> Chicken in the pot, chicken in the pot, 
chicken in the pot. Get down on the shelves and then stop stopping. was a food vamp, if you will, but also one of the first, um, did a little rap in the middle of it based on signifying monkey and some nursery rhymes that my nieces taught me, which was like, hey boys, how about a fight? Cause here comes Ricky with the girdle on tight. That was the one. And then the, uh, and then the signifying monkey was, well, you know your little baby sister that you hold so dear? Well, you can go look that up, so I'm not going to do it here. And uh, so that was the guitar part. And we're going to run over to the piano now, and uh, we're going to keep going. So I hope that's okay with you. Yeah. I've been waiting too long to sing again. I'm not letting go yet. Um, so... The second song on the record was called is called On Saturday Afternoons in 1963. It seemed to me at that time when I was 24, 23 or 24, um, not that long ago, right? Uh, 15, 16 years before, I'd been just a little girl in bare feet walking around Phoenix. And it was, even though it was a very hard and horrible year because we'd moved and nobody liked me at school, it was a magic year. Horses and lizards and I discovered I could catch anything. Uh, and when I sang, the birds and rabbits came. In fact, they still do. If we open up the curtain, you'd see there's a whole bunch of birds out there going, what are you guys doing in there? So this song, um, can I, um, I just wondered, could you give me that, that uh, blanket there? I need to be a little higher, thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'll have to do. So I, was, I wrote it thinking about my nieces and my little sister. And they were little then in 1978. And uh, so this was for Jennifer, who passed away just a few months ago, Tiffany, and my little sister, Pamela. <laughs> Watch the hours snow 
side B was this song. I wrote at the same place I wrote that song, wrote these two songs a week from each other. Uh, maybe the same weekend, I don't remember anymore. Are there are a lot of tears, and I remember in the, a lot of crying between lines that got written down. This song, this title was in, inspired by my mother, who said, uh, I was on the phone with her, <coughs> Uh, just talking about anything at all and she said did you say Coolsville and I said what she said did you just say Coolsville and I said no but I gotta go and hung up <laughs> it always seemed to me that you know angels or the other world whatever it is if you're not getting the message they just have somebody walk up and say did you say Coolsville that's what that felt like to me
chapter that song. Ah, I know. This song is called uh, After Hours, 12 Bars, Pass Good Night.
has gone home I'm standing on the corner all alone first record. We'll take a, just a short break. We're going to do another tune or two for you. Okay? Yeah. We're going to do infinity for you. And then I'm going to have to go cry my normal Sunday crying day. But we'll do one more song. Yeah, I like to cry on Sundays and you don't have to cry any other day. Thank you. 
just wake up. But the dream goes on. The dream goes on. And every corner of the galaxy, they are watching us from infinity. Thank you for coming. Mike Dillon. And y'all, links to donate in the comments. Thank you, everybody. Joe, Jamie, Mike, and my <laughs> <laughs>